welcome to this week's News Bulletin Roundup. Let's take a look at the headlines. Trump administration to cut troop levels in Afghanistan and Iraq. President-elect Joe Biden warns more people may die of coronavirus as Trump blocks transition. World Economic Forum founder says Joe Biden will boost multilateralism. Biotech company Moderna says early data shows its coronavirus vaccine is 94.5% effective. Facebook and Twitter CEOs grilled in U.S. Senate committee over their growing control of free expression. Terrorism is the biggest global problem. Nations supporting terrorists should be held guilty. Prime Minister Modi at BRICS meet. China ready to cooperate with India and other BRICS countries on COVID-19 vaccine development. Chinese President Xi Jinping. Prime Minister Modi spoke to U.S. President-elect Joe Biden discussing cooperation and ties between both countries. Indian and Canadian foreign ministers expressing confidence in growing the India-Canada ties. The world waits for justice of 26-11 Mumbai terror attack as the terrorists are roaming free in Pakistan. Two Canadians were killed and many injured in 26-11-2008 Mumbai attack. But first, Trump administration to cut troop levels in Afghanistan and Iraq. U.S. President Donald Trump earlier this week ordered the Pentagon to pull 2,500 U.S. troops from Afghanistan and Iraq by mid-January 2021. By January 15th, 2021, our forces, their size in Afghanistan will be 2,500 troops. Our force size in Iraq will also be 2,500 by that same date. This is consistent with our established plans and strategic objectives. Acting U.S. Defense Secretary Christopher Miller told reporters that I am formally announcing that we will implement President Trump's orders to continue our repositioning of forces. I am formally announcing that we will implement President Trump's orders to continue our repositioning of forces from those two countries. The Trump administration's decision to make a major reduction in Afghanistan, where violence has surged as Afghan negotiators engage in halting peace talks, in particular could bring to a head tensions that have been intensified between some at the Pentagon and the White House during a chaotic transition period. And now recent developments in U.S. election results. President-elect Joe Biden warns more people may die of coronavirus as Trump blocks transition. More people may die. On Trump's refusal to concede, Biden said that he found this more embarrassing for the country than deliberating for my ability to get started. More embarrassing for the country than debilitating for my ability to get started. The president-elect also urged Congress to pass pandemic relief legislation and encourage the further development of COVID-19 vaccines. Talking about big techs, Facebook and Twitter CEOs grilled in U.S. Senate committee over their growing control of free expression. Does voter fraud exist? I, I don't know for certain. Are you an expert in voter fraud? No, I'm not. Well, why then is Twitter right now putting purported warnings on virtually any statement about voter fraud. We're, we're simply linking to a broader conversation so that people have more information. No, no, you're not. You put up a page that says, quote, voter fraud of any kind is exceedingly rare in the United States. That's not linking to a broader conversation. That's taking a disputed policy position. And you're a publisher when you're doing that. You're entitled to take a policy position, but you don't get to pretend you're not a publisher and get a special benefit under Section 230 as a result. Now, Mr. Zuckerberg, you're familiar with the task platform, aren't you? Senator, uh, we use the, the task system for, um, I, I think it's, as you say, for people coordinating all kinds of uh, work across the company, although I, I'm not sure if I'd agree with the characterization specifically um, around content moderation that you gave. Coming to World Economic Forum founders' comments on President-elect Joe Biden will boost the multilateralism. Multilateralists will get a boost by the election of President Biden, and I'm very hopeful that we can now create the necessary systems in which we need for the 21st century, said Professor Klaus Schwab, founder and executive chairman of World Economic Forum. Now looking at coronavirus vaccine manufacturers, biotech company Moderna says its early data shows its coronavirus vaccine is 94.5% effective. 
The results come hot on the heels of similar results from Pfizer and add to the growing confidence that vaccines can help end the pandemic. Both companies used a highly innovative and experimental approach to designing their vaccines. Moving to BRICS Virtual Summit 2020, India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi said terrorism is the biggest global problem. Nations supporting terrorists should be held guilty. Addressing the 12th BRICS Summit, he asserted that there was a need to confront the countries that supported and sponsored terror. Excellencies, Atankwad Aaj, Vishwake Samne. सबसे बड़ी समस्या है हमें यह सुनिश्चित करना होगा कि आतंकवादियों को समर्थन और सहायता देने वाले देशों को भी दोषी ठहराया जाए Speaking at the 12th BRICS summit, she said that China is ready to cooperate with India and other BRICS countries on COVID-19 vaccine developments. We need to champion the concept of common, comprehensive cooperative and sustainable security. We need to oppose interference in others' internal affairs, as well as unilateral sanctions and long-arm jurisdiction. With concerted efforts, we will foster a peaceful and stable environment for development. And now speaking of President-elect Joe Biden's conversation with India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi, the President-elect noted that he looks forward to working closely with the Prime Minister on shared global challenges, including containing COVID-19 and defending against future health crises, tackling the threat of climate change, launching the global economic recovery, strengthening democracy at home and abroad, and maintaining a secure and prosperous Indo-Pacific region. Now focusing on India-Canada relationships, Indian and Canadian foreign ministers expressed confidence in growth of India-Canada ties. External Affairs Minister S. Jason Kerr and his Canadian counterpart Francis Philip Champagne on Tuesday discussed India-Canada's strong commercial and investment relationship and expressed confidence in further growth of the bilateral relationship between the two countries. The world waits for justice of 2611 Mumbai terror attack as the terrorists are roaming free in Pakistan. Two Canadians were killed and many injured in 2611 2008 Mumbai attack. That's all for you. Keep watching the International News Channel. I'm Julia Cosby.